Good afternoon folks, welcome back to Advanced Higher Chemistry. We are, we're moving on from electromagnetic spectrum, uh, energy uh, and light, and we're moving into hopefully slightly more new stuff for the physics people amongst us. Uh, we're moving to look at electrons and how they interact with the light. Um, on, uh, here's one I prepared earlier, uh, as they say, here's an emission spectrum of hydrogen. We're going to go with hydrogen. <coughs> Why? Because it's nice and simple. Simplest element in the universe, one proton, one electron, can't go far with that. Can't go far wrong with that, sorry. Um, what would I like to talk about? I would like to talk about these lines. Um, these are what you get in the visible spectrum if you take hydrogen and zap it up to a high temperature, if you burn it, for example. Um, this is the flame, part of the flame that you get. There are some lines here, and there are some lines here that we, we're not too interested in, because we can't see them. Um, what does each line represent? Well, each line is a particular wavelength, of course. Um, and that means, if you recall from last time, a particular frequency as well, of course. This has a particular well, lambda and a particular f. Now, when we looked at emission spectroscopy, we saw that it was basically excited electrons at a higher energy level than normal. They collapse back down to their ground state or to a lower energy level. And in the process, although it doesn't, I'm going to draw the arrow here, but, you know, it doesn't happen. Just um, this gap here, this energy gap, is, of course, directly proportional to the frequency of light that's given out. Um, we rejig that as the energy equals Planck's constant times this frequency. So this energy drop will govern the frequency of light that's emitted. So that means this line here at a particular frequency value is not one of these lines. It's a very common mistake, an easy mistake to make. It's not an energy level. This is a transition, a change between two energy levels, specifically, actually. In the case of emission, it's a drop. <coughs> Excuse me. So each one of these lines does not represent an energy level. It represents a change between the energy levels. And for emission spectroscopy, it's a drop. So what? Well, why was I bashing on so much about the electron disappearing and then reappearing, this quantization thing here? That is very easy to prove. That must happen because there are no transitions in between. There are absolutely no lines in this corresponding section here, which means this electron can only exist in these energy levels. That is proof of quantization, the fact that there's blank spaces here. Um, where would I like to move from this? Well, I would like to look at this interesting pattern here. Um, you notice that there's quite a big gap and then less of a gap and less of a light, and it sort of it moves towards a constant, uh, not a constant, sorry, it moves towards a gathered uh, frequency or wavelength here. Well, the same thing happens for the lines at this end of the spectrum, and the same thing happens for the lines down here. Um, now, I suspect I'm going to try and, I'm going to pause the camera for drawing this next diagram here. I'm going to try and explain a couple of things, and the significance of these things. For starters, you notice that energy is going up here, of course, energy increasing along here because wavelength is decreasing. Now, there comes a point where there are no more emission lines. There is a minimum um, wavelength for this happening. It's around 92 nanometers, if I remember correctly, for hydrogen. There's nothing above that in terms of energy. I'm going to come to the significance of that, and I'm going to come to the slightly strange patterns in my next diagram. I'll just pause the camera. Okay, folks, what we've got here is a representation of the energy levels that can exist for a hydrogen atom. We've got right down here, of course, the ground state. This is the, the lowest, the normal, unexcited energy level. And then the second level and third level, fourth, and so on. Um, and what I'm going to say is I'm going to show you what happens when electrons... Uh, fall from these excited levels down to one of these energy levels here. So there's an electron collapsing back down. There's another one. And there we go. And then here. And then collapsing back down to here again. 
Now please remember that the smaller the gap, the smaller the energy is. Um, and the larger the gap, the larger the energy is. Now, I'm perhaps hoping that you can see from this, can I fit these fibers in? It's using an incredibly high-tech method of folding the paper. There we go, I'm on a split screen shot. So, this is 700 nanometers, so this is low energy. So that corresponds to a smaller drop. So this drop here is that line there. And then up slightly in energy means a larger, a larger drop. And then up to that one, and up to that one, and up to that one. Happy with that, guys? You notice, by the way, that these energy levels I'm drawing are slowly condensing together. There will come a point, of course, where there is a maximum energy level. And that is alluded to by these lines. In case you're wondering, by the way, why I collapsed down to there instead of down to the ground state, that's because um, each of these little blocks of lines is caused by electrons collapsing down to a particular energy level. So this entire series here corresponds to things falling down to the second energy level. Please remember, of course, that this is a higher energy block. In fact, this is the highest energy block that you can get for hydrogen. And of course, high energy means a larger drop. So I'm also hoping that you can see that these lines here correspond to all these electrons falling right down to the ground state. Did I say this wasn't going to be a walk in the park? Um, I also said, I was hoping to explain what each of these lines corresponds to. I hope you can see that. It's a, it's a drop, a transition uh, of excited electrons back down to a lower energy level. And I also said, I wonder what the significance of this number here is, 92 nanometers, which is the highest energy line you ever get. Well, what's happened there is that is the absolute largest drop ever possible. So that's an electron collapsing down from the highest energy level you can get. What's the significance of that? Well, that means that if you give... Remember, the electrons were promoted up initially by being zapped by a ridiculously high temperature or high energy. And this is the highest height they can get to. But if you had given them enough energy, they were just sitting, minding their own business, on the ground state, and you blast them with enough energy they will actually end up leaving the atom entirely. That's how you strip electrons off an atom. You just give them enough energy and you'll blow them right off the whole atom. Never to come back again. Does this sound familiar? The energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms. That'll be ionization energy then from higher. Excuse my wife. My, I must have said something funny there. My wife has just left in a state of hilarity. Um, so um, this enables us to actually calculate this famous quantity from a higher chemistry. Calculate ionization energy of hydrogen atoms. Remember it had to be gaseous atoms? Can do with molecules. Um... Let's do that calculation, actually. E equals HFL. We're going to substitute in F equals C over lambda. So E equals HCL over lambda. Get ourselves a calculation. Calculation? Calculator, even. So um, I'm going to pause this. Come back with a number. Feel free, of course, to do this yourself. You could pause the video if you fancy, for your practice. Calculate it yourself. Okay. Um, if you did pause it and you're coming back to check your answer, the answer is 130... Sorry, read the numbers, hey? 1301497. That's joules per mole, which we can turn into kilojoules, and it becomes 1301. Um, if we just open ourselves a little tab here and then double check what the ionization energy of hydrogen is.
we get a laptop that's running very, very slow. Um, do you know what? Let's, let's not worry about this. Um, <coughs> let's stick with the theory in that way. I don't have to argue with slow, slow laptops. Um, so, two concepts here today so far, folks. Three concepts, actually. Number one is, how do we know about this energy level stuff? And the answer is, we know about it because we see the emission spectra of elements. We see there's nothing in between, so therefore the energy levels must only be able to exist at certain values. Um, we know that if you give electrons enough energy, they will be promoted at the higher levels. As they fall back down again, they will give out light. The light, each line in the emission, in the emission spectrum, corresponds to a transition between these levels. Um, we also see that there is a highest uh, energy emission line somewhere for each element, and that enables us to calculate what the ionisation energy would be for that particular element. Um, and I think that's as far as I want to go with this video. Um, where am I going to go next? Well, you noticed this. You, if you noticed, I sneaked some numbers in here. I gave these some values. I didn't give them actual energy values, I just gave them numbers for each level. That is the first of our quantum numbers. I think I'll discuss that in the next video. We'll run through uh, the four quantum numbers. We'll run through the fact that SQA changed the notation of them recently, so if you look back in old papers, you'll find there's slightly different notation, but that's okay. And we'll run through uh, the interconnections between these quantum numbers. Thanks for listening. Bye.